Hazel, we're asking the learners on the science experiment course to keep a study journal, and I thought I'd ask you, as Dean of Science, why taking detailed written notes is good scientific practice? Well, the thing is, it's just like the rest of life. It's really obvious that day what those measurements or observations or whatever, what they were for, what you achieved, what, what happened. Next day, next week, next month, certainly next year, you have long since forgotten. Yeah. And that's, that's really why, just so that you understand how the thought processes and everything else worked out, what the things were that were affecting the experiment that day. So what kind of things do scientists write down then? What have you got in your oh, notebooks? Oh, my notebooks. So this <laughs> is a bit tatty. <laughs> um, well, you know, these are real field notebooks. Um, they've got wet, they've been thrown in the mud and everything else, and they're held together in, you know, with duct tape. Do you know, this is the most important piece of field equipment, is, is the <laughs> roll of duct tape. So the sorts of things, oops, that we would note in, a, in the book. Well, we've got phone numbers of local people that are, are helping us, for example. Here I've got uh, the name of a station, it's one of the places I make my measurements, and I've, I've explained how to get there by the cairn on the right of the road, two kilometres from the turning right. of the lake, that, that sort of thing. So with that kind of information in it, that means that you could pass this notebook on, say, to one of your students, so they've got the local contacts and the locations to go exactly. to. Exactly. So for field science, there's no point keeping your data hidden away in the notebook just for your own use. In some cases, other people want to go back to that precise yeah. location. Now, of course, these days you can use GPS, mm. but there are other things that you need to note down. So, for example, you might be able to precisely locate a point using GPS, but you would need to know whether the measurement that you were making was up on the top of a boulder or the bottom or, you know, just around or, or whatever it is. So you would have pictures and you would have a detailed description right. so that anybody could then come along and precisely make that same measurement. So apart from those kind of notes, I'm guessing most of your notebooks are full of numbers. They are. They are, they are very nerdy looking notebooks. So these are the sorts of measurements I would make. I'd say what date it was, right. I'd say what the measurements were, and here are the numbers and some other notes about them. Mm. And yes, it's just numbers, numbers, numbers. But every now and then I've got comments such as, uh, instrument fell over or instrument knocked or something like that right. because that's what happened and that could affect the numbers that you make and also it helps you to remember it because if it's just a string of numbers yeah. you come back next week next year it's just a string of numbers yeah. but if you've said oh this was where Bill fell over you think oh yeah I remember that mm. and, and you can remember what happened you remember whether it was raining or, or whatever. Mm. Now, it's interesting because we're both volcanologists, we both work on volcanoes, and this just shows how personal every scientist's notebooks are because yours are full of numbers yeah. and mine are full of pictures. Wow, I must say yours is very pretty. <laughs> well, I think it just depends on the type of research mm. that you're doing. So th this is essentially a log through layers of rock. And I'm quite fussy because I always have a line down one side of my notebooks and that's where I record the sample that I've taken next to the layer that I've taken it from. So I'm guessing that, you know, every, everybody's notebooks are going to be different according to the type of scientific data that you want to record. Well, that's absolutely right. And, you know, the thing is that you can't say that's right and that's wrong or the other way around. It, it, it depends. It, so long as it does the job, so long as this reminds you of, in this case, mm. where you collected the samples and what the strata looked like, what yeah. types of things you were seeing, that's doing its job. Mm. And of course, you could hand that over to anybody else. They could go to that locality and they would be able to identify where to go and collect yeah. those same rocks. So the job is to remind you and to be able to help somebody else. Yeah. And I, I guess nowadays with digital photographs, there's a tendency to people to think, well, I'm not going to write it all down in this terribly painstaking way. I'm just going to take a photograph. But photos just don't work as well, do they? Actually, it sounds really old fashioned, but no, I don't think they do mm. work as well. I don't think it's a case of either or. I think you can use both, but there's nothing like a field notebook, yeah. actually. Some people record things on their phone, and of course you can write on, onto your phone as well and do, do all that at mm. the same time, and then you can email it or whatever to, to lots and lots of people. But there's something about writing it chronologically through the notebook like mm. this that does help it somehow to, to, to keep it into your mind in a better way. Yeah, and it's interesting because I've, I've got one as well that I did for my follow-up experiments, uh, and I've written down, you know, the number of the experiments and, as you say, the date and time and the various conditions and things but I've got one here that says Ooh. failed. <laughs>
But that's yeah. equally as important, isn't it? Absolutely it is. A failed experiment is, is not a failure. Mm. So what you were expecting didn't happen, but it's just as important. And then really, really importantly, you never cross out anything in a notebook, right. do you? You underline it or you say not to use or something in, in your final analysis, but you've written it in the notebook and, and it must stay in the notebook. Mm. That That's a perfectly valid note, whether or not the data turn out to be valid. Now, I mean, our... our books are, are pretty complicated and pretty detailed. What we're asking the learners to do is a very simple study journal, but that's of equal value, isn't it? Absolutely. It's very important to note, as we've said, the time and the date and so on, and where you are, whatever, um, environmental conditions. So if you were outside doing, doing an experiment, for example, and it was raining, you might get different results yeah. from if it was sunny. All sorts of things can affect an experiment. And sometimes you don't even know what those are until you happen to have noted them all down. Then you can perhaps find variations and you can see, well, oh, actually, look, the, the conditions here were different mm. from this other time. And the two times that you've made those experiments might have been years apart, depending on, on what you're doing. And you wouldn't remember that it was bright and sunny or raining yeah. or, or whatever, unless you'd written it down. You might even note down at the, at the end of the experiment, don't do this next time, try changing so-and-so or something. Yes, and if you've written it down, you're more likely to remember it. Mm. Well, the other thing, of course, is it is, might have been a failed experiment in terms of what you were trying to do at the time, mm. but you've still got those measurements, you've still got those results, and it might be that another time, what you were actually looking for was whatever happened this time that you thought was a failure one time, yeah. might not actually turn out to be. Some of the fantastic results that have been observed through the history of science have actually been people's apparent mistakes. failures. <laughs> people's mistakes, yes. I accidentally mixed this with that and... Oh, look what I got. So what we're asking the learners to do now in keeping a study journal could be the start of something big going forward into the future. Beginning of their scientific careers. <laughs>